Hey, what's going on? What is up tonight? We are starting an epic. This is like the Iliad. It's going to be an epic poem. Hang on. Let me get Kate. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Boop, 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 boop. What's up, Becca? How are you? Florida fam, Jaqui, what's going on? I'm still waiting for my cohort. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. There she is. There Hello. she is. Hello. There she is. Uh, sorry. I, I realized I forgot a photo at the last second, so I was trying to find it. So That's okay. Yeah. It's unacceptable. This is, I mean, we, we are rushed. We have a lot to cover. We're going to do the Jungle Cruise in one night, and we're going <laughs> to do it in under 45 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? No, I, I can't. I can't. I'm so, <laughs> I was so, uh. The first time we did one of these of we all we history, doing. we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we did dress up, though, which we was did. fun. We dressed yeah. up like pirates, and we did pirates in about two hours-ish, and it was rushed is it was. the easiest way to put it. <laughs> but it was, I was a great episode. I mean, I, the, we did the, yep, it it's, was fine. It was very <laughs> fun. It was, it was a good way. I mean, it's our most listened to episode, of course, because it's the beginning. So, like, I feel it still set us up for success. It wasn't like a train wreck. It just yeah. was not what we realized we wanted to do, which was to take our time and truly appreciate and enjoy uh, all that is about the, the history of the parks and the things that we love. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, it's a. I'm excited to be starting a new series. Should we? I don't know. Should we just jump right in? Like, or do you no, have any... dude. Let's talk for like another hour, and then like, <laughs> then we'll talk for like an hour and a half, and then we'll, then and then we'll, we won't cut off. We won't leave for like another 45 minutes. It's pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> That's normal. That's what we do. So. No, I have to. I'm headed yes. to the beach, so I can't. I can't stay super late because I'm gonna. Yeah. Go. Let's do it. Well, I, I, I do think, and I think you're cool with this, is we should probably be a little bit more precise on time. Try to keep them somewhere around an hour, an hour and a half, because we do know that we have an infinite number of these if we want. I so know. we can go uh, as long as we want. That's what I'm saying. So, like, in my opinion, just like we, we, I think we did a really nice job with Pinocchio. I think we did a decent job with the Haunted Mansion and its 16 episodes. <laughs> 16 episodes. <laughs> Uh, I think the Jungle Cruise will be at least 10 plus. Yeah. Uh, so I hope you uh, enjoy the Jungle Cruise. And if you don't, this is probably a good time for you to learn about the Jungle Cruise. And maybe you'll appreciate it a lot more. You yeah. know, there's a lot of really amazing things to learn too. New, yeah, new there's... tie ins you probably have never thought of before. It's mm -hmm. great, it's an amazing ride. So there's a lot. So buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> there's no buckles on the Jungle Cruise. So just, you know. <laughs> Hold the handrails on our boat, you know? <laughs> All right, we ready? Let's do it. I'm so nervous. It's like, like if we haven't done one of these in so long, it's been I so know. short. Okay, all right. You got this. Welcome to another episode of Dishery. My name is Kirk, a.k.a. Walrus Carp, and with me, as always, is uh, our co-host, Kate, the Disney Cicerone. Kate, how are we doing this evening? I'm doing so good. I cannot wait for this series. I feel like I've been ready to dive into a longer series for a while. I mean, but we did enjoy the Haunted Mansion and all of its 16 episode mm -hmm. glory. But um, we've been kind of tossing around which attraction to try next. Well, I think, I think uh, you know, because this is season two of Distry, we've been doing this long enough. Uh, every season should have just one epic, long uh, hero journey, and journey, uh, yes. and and I think the Jungle Cruise is going to be our epic one for this season, and then we'll tackle another one. I know uh, Jackie had said she would love to hear pirates, and I know we would love to do pirates in a longer one. We were tossing up in the air, Jungle Cruise or Big Thunder, but we landed on Jungle Cruise. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think that's appropriate. You know, Jungle Jungle Cruise has been around a lot longer anyway, so mm -hmm. um, and it really is. Uh, it, it's such an iconic attraction that I think that it deserves some attention, just like Pirates, just like um, Haunted Mansion. Although we didn't give Pirates the respect it deserves. So <laughs> you can go back and listen to that in episode one. But we really did kind of rush through that one. So we will give mm -hmm. that some more attention at some point because it really does deserve that. But, yep. Yeah. Exactly yeah, Jungle right. Cruise. So Jungle Cruise, uh, tonight we're going to focus on really just the concept. Uh, I don't know how far we're going to get, but... 
what are some of the inspirations? What happened pre uh, 1955 being able to actually enter this attraction? So we have to go all the way back, way before even somebody's talking about making a ride. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think that the best place we start is with um, Walt's trip with El Grupo to South America. I think that's where this starts. Is that which Spanish is... for the group? <laughs> yeah, it's like the name they made up for their group okay. that went down to South America. <laughs> I don't think it's actually Spanish. Um, but this actually was in 1941. The government asked Walt Disney to visit uh, South American nations as a way of spreading American influence um, because the Axis powers were kind of like courting Latin America. They had a lot of in they they were starting to have a lot of influence and kind of sway people to their direction. And America is over here like, oh, my goodness, like we have to do something. And so they thought maybe sending Walt Disney and showing that Americans um, have are multifaceted because of like their perception of Americans was getting swayed by these Axis powers. So they said maybe if we show them like the art and culture and music and movies um, of our country and our culture, maybe then that would build some goodwill between our nations. So that was the purpose of it. Yes, and, and I know it's ridiculous, but I, I Googled it just to make sure. But it does mean the group. Even, yeah. even so. it's, What's funny is that I think they spelled it differently, though. They didn't spell it like <laughs> um, like El Grupo as in G-R-U-P-O as in yeah, it, it was probably is. like, it was probably G-R. It's like group. Yeah. Yeah, like G-R-O-U-P-O. So, yeah, <laughs> they spelled it in the Americanized English way. But yeah, the El Grupo, there's actually a documentary all about that trip. So if you haven't seen it, it's called El Grupo. And it's a, it's basically what it is. It's, just, it's documenting their travels down to South America. It was um, 18 of Walt Disney's top staff went with him, which is where we got, um, if you think, the three caballeros that came out of that trip. Um, a lot of that like um, Latin influence that you'd see around that time all came out of them going down to South America. And they also, I believe, stopped in Mexico, too, on the way back. So they it had um, multiple cultural influences from that trip. Um, so on the way back, so where does the Jungle Cruise tie in here? OK, what? Because this is, you know, you don't think of necessarily just South America for the Jungle Cruise. You think of a lot of other countries. Well, on the way back through Colombia, they actually stopped in a small town and they took a boat ride upriver into the rainforest that was like 30 miles upriver. And a lot of people that traveled with Walt have said and, and it's documented that they think that this is where Walt got the idea in his head that they needed a jungle river ride. So the original idea of the ride kind of came from that trip with El Grupo. El Grupo. El Grupo. Yeah. Um, so can I get to where, cause you have, you, you have access to like such an awesome library. So I don't yeah. want to jump ahead. Sure. When can we can get to this picture of Walt? You, oh my gosh, please. <laughs> cause it just makes me he happy. He looks dancing. like the leader of El Grupo. Yes, he is. <laughs> they said it was pretty much like a big party. So yeah. it was, like it was a goodwill tour, it was, but they just partied the whole time. <laughs> seems like. <laughs> It, you know what's so funny? Because like, if you think about travel was integral to the success of many of the story arcs, uh, you know, his, his trip to the Riviera, so many stories were drawn from that. So it's, it's interesting to see uh, how travel was, was so pinnacle for the success of the Disney company, or at least for Walt's inspiration. I mean, and, and even his, his love for Polynesian, right? Like, yeah. he went to all these places. It's not like he just read about them and thought, oh, that would be interesting. Like, he experienced these and wanted to have other people experiencing them with having, without having to leave. Yeah, I mean, his travel in Europe, for sure, um, influenced so many things, including you think of, like, the Matterhorn in Disneyland. You think of um, the Canal Boats of the World, which also kind of came from that, and there... I actually had someone reach out to me asking about why the canal boats um, have registered in Denham on the side. I think that's how you say that. Dean might be able to tell me <laughs> exactly how to say it, but it's a it's a a place in Europe that has a lot of um, canals and boats that run on the canal, and so it's all kind of a nod to that place in England where they actually did film Robin Hood, though not the animated one, obviously the live action. Sure. So there's yeah. a connection there. So all over the place there's these connections back to europe like the all monorail as well from uh i think it's germany um 
Walt just collected things from around the globe and put them in Disneyland. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I think he SCD. he represented the world pretty interestingly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can we get into true life? This is real life. This is true life. I I think we have to. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. It. Okay. So, uh, I actually remember watching these as a kid. Now, I didn't obviously see them when they first started in 1948. And what I'm talking about is the True Life Adventure series films, uh, which basically showcased all of these really interesting stories. So, it was nature and the beauty of nature. So, uh, Walt Disney, I, I, wrote, I actually wrote things down. This is impressive. Look at this you. is already impressive. I, I, I know. I, so, <laughs> so I'm like very, I'm, you <laughs> I'm very prepared. So uh, Walt Disney and his team, they created the True Life Adventure series with the aim of educating and entertaining audiences through the magic of motion pictures. Because Disney really kind of felt that the films could help showcase both beauty and diversity of the natural world and maybe inspire audiences to appreciate and conserve the planet's wildlife and ecosystems. Which I think uh, is... It's kind of fitting even when you when you think about where the Disney company has gone. We see that in, in Epcot a ton. We see that obviously in all of Animal Kingdom. And actually kind of, I was thinking about it earlier today, the safari at Animal Kingdom is kind of what Walt wanted the Jungle Cruise to be. But that's, that's oh, yeah. for another time and yes. another place. 100%. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, these, were, these were also showcasing some new film technology, and it demonstrated how powerful, which I think is really cool. You can actually watch all of these for free on YouTube if you want. Uh, it's not just what you would consider a documentary or a, a history of animals and just seeing them in their natural habitat. They told stories, and I think that's, you know, once again, the success of Disney is their ability to create and frame both tension, shock, horror, excitement, love, all interwoven. And they did this. Storytelling. With, yes. Right. It's, it's just mm -hmm. unbelievable. So there was really, really high quality level cinematography because the very first one, Seal Island, comes out in 1948. If you don't Seal have a poster Island. of that, I do in a second. I, I don't have it. So Okay. I, I have it up. And I also have a clip of it, too. Dude, I'm like... Right. Mm, I'm coming at it. This, this, I feel good. All right. Okay. Well, I know you're prepared. I'm so. Pleased. I know this is you. I, you have to give me a I'm little. So yes. Please. I know. That's so great. Um, so, <laughs> go ahead. Why don't you show that poster? I'll, I'll just okay. mention that they won. Um, the documentaries actually won seven Academy Awards. So these were like so well done that they won Academy Awards, and they. Um, Look. See, there you go. Academy Award <laughs> yeah. for short feature. And there's actually one of them, I'm trying to remember which one, I think it's Waterbirds, but there's actually one where they got a little bit of hot water later because, um, and Walt Disney didn't know that they did this, but when it came to the lemmings, they actually kind of like forced these lemmings to jump off a cliff into what they said was the ocean, but it was like actually like just a, a lake or a pond. Um, and then they say, and they're so stupid that they basically just like go off the cliff, right? And that's where we get that idea that lemmings are really dumb actually came from this documentary series. <laughs> and it's not true at all. It just was like um, something they made up for storytelling without mm -hmm. Walt's approval. So people were like, it was actually not a great thing that that happened. But um, if you're ever wondering where that idea comes from, it's from True Life Adventure series. <laughs> oh, you know, what? that's a really good question is whether or not these are on Disney Plus. I don't know. I, I know they're on YouTube. Some of I them are, yeah. I didn't look. Um, yeah, because I looked up the the African lion one is on there for sure, because I looked up that. So, okay. yes, a lot of them are. I did write down notes about Seal Island. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Tell Dude, us about you, Seal Island. <laughs> I'm, st I'm bringing it to a new level. I love it. All right, it. So, so Seal Island was released in 1948, and it was a documentary about the lives and habits of seals living on a remote island off the coast of Alaska. And it featured a ton of footage of the seals, their social behaviors, hunting techniques, and like how they generally were in the environment and things that they had, right? Um, the one thing that I love about watching this on YouTube is the use of sound and music really kind of like brings this to life. And yeah. these were huge commercial successes. I mean, they end up making a ton more of these. Uh, I do have up here just because it's easier to show, like yeah. Seal Island, Beaver Valley, which I didn't look Beaver up Valley. the poster for it. Yep, mm -hmm. Nature's Half Acre, the Olympic Elk, Waterbirds, 
Bear Country, Power of the Everglades, The Living Desert, which you showed earlier. It, it's actually yeah. a multi-feature because it also had The Vanishing Prairie. And then, yes, The African yeah. Lion, Secrets of Life. I mean, there was there was a ton of these, and they super, super successful. Well, okay, so The Vanishing, uh, the Living Desert and The Vanishing Prairie, I have a, a few notes about that. So The Living Desert um, was actually the first... Um, Disney film that was distributed by Buena Vista Film Distribution Company, which is what they invented when RKO didn't want to distribute it. So it's named after the street where their studio was, Buena Vista. So if you've ever seen Buena Vista Studios or whatever, like on the front of uh, Disney movies, it started with this particular film because RKO is like, I don't know how to market this to an audience because nothing had ever really been done like this before. So um, that was in 1953, Buena Vista. Um, film distribution. But then in 1954, Vanishing Prairie was actually banned in New York state because of a scene showing for the first time ever a buffalo giving birth. Um, and so Walt said, the birth scene would never have appeared on the screen if I believed it might offend an audience. It would be a shame if New York children had to believe the stork brings buffaloes too. <laughs> You know, there's also a fun fact about The Vanishing Prairie, which they've never shown before, and I don't think they'll ever show again, is that it shows a buffalo with wings, and that was the origin of <laughs> buffalo wings. But they, they can't show it anymore, because legally, I think there's some issue they got into, but yeah, the buffalo wings were, were a problem. Yeah, those flying buffalo. <laughs> All right, I do, have, I do have a little bit on Living Desert. Uh so Living Desert 1953, as you had said, is all about the wildlife and ecosystems and desert environments of the American Southwest, featuring uh, footage from uh, different desert animals. Remember, Desert 1S, not desserts. Uh, <laughs> Spelling lesson. All right. Take it. Oh, I just, when I was a spell kid, things correctly. When I was a kid, I used to, I don't know why. that it was always, It's still stuck in my head. I can't not look at the word oh desert and go... You don't. You want less desert. You you want more dessert. So two S's. <laughs> I can't. It's, it's just my life. Uh, <laughs> it featured lizards, snakes, road runners, and showed once again their behaviors and adaptations to how they could manage living in that harsh desert uh, climate. And again, huge, huge success. Um, and mainly because of the way it was narrated and the cinematography effects. I do have a clip from. Seal Island, if you want to watch. Do you want to watch a quick clip? Yeah, and can I mention about Seal Island? The, yeah. the reason that they actually did these was Walt had a friend. I'm trying to remember his name. I should have looked it up. But um, Walt had a friend that was a just kind of a documentary. Like, he would just go and film nature, and he had spent some time in Alaska, <laughs> and he kind of had all these massive things of film, and Walt Disney's like, well, what do we do with this? And so then they turned it into Seal Island. So it was actually just like a whole bunch of random film that he was like, I don't know what to do with this. And then they turned it into this. Well, it, it's interesting too, because they have so much of this, uh, this filming that they used uh, for animators as well, to be able to actually see how animals move uh, and, and rather yeah. than like bringing in yeah, like lions Andy. into, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. although I do like when they brought a lion or a tiger into Michael Eisner's office. Yes. I love that. That's, <laughs> That's one of my still favorite made, stories. That's like the greatest story ever. <laughs> That's Joe Rody trying to get Animal Kingdom built. He it's just hey, it was successful. Animals are exciting and they, scary. Mm -hmm. It certainly <laughs> was. Although uh, the animals definitely in the original Jungle Cruise were none of those things, and in fact, the Jungle Cruise itself was actually. But we'll we'll, talk, we'll get, we'll get to, that. to that. We'll get yes. to that. Okay, so Seal Seal Island. What I love about Seal Island is it actually starts out um, with like an animation section. So yeah, see, this was distributed by RKO because this was before, um, because they said we won't distribute it if it doesn't have animation in it because that's what people wanted. So they had to add animation to it for R RKO to distribute it. Yep. So in the very beginning, uh, <laughs> on Seal Island. Seal so they talk, they talk about, like, I just love the old school brush strokes. This brings me back so much to the beginning of Disney animation and just, like, I, I don't know. It's just, this is the stuff that I remember watching as a kid that had been out for already decades, but just I fell in love with. So, all right, let's get into them showing seals. Just, I mean, it's great. It's just, if you think, like, where National Geographic actually, like, got all their things from, like, you know, this is, this is early. 
Mm -hmm. I don't. I think the, the, the magazine National Geographic was before this, I believe. I'd have to look that up. I'm not a National Geographic expert, but you know, putting it together in a film way like this. Yeah. There won't even be time for meals. Oh no! What's he gonna do? Say he he he's not into that. I, I go, you know what's great about these two? They're very approachable. They're 25 minutes long. So if you want to just uh, sit back and relax and watch some seals make noises, uh, you know, put that on the background. Oh, the music's looks, great. Look like, that looks like a sea lion instead of a seal. Maybe so, it is. Because we have those on the Oregon coast. So you can probably go <clears> see those. But um, yeah, those, that looks like a sea lion. Anyway. So that is um, True Life Adventures, and they made, I believe, 13 of them. 13, um, yeah. There was another one called Jungle Cat. <laughs> Jungle Cat. Well, and then... Which so came then, actually after. That was after the Jungle Cruise had already been, uh, been constructed, because that was in 1958. Yeah, the one that is attributed most to influencing Jungle Cruise, which is what we're talking about um, here on Distory Tonight, is actually the um, African Lion is the one that influenced it the most. Um, which was filmed in Kenya in 1952. Oh, that's not the right one. So, um, I thought see I had if I can a find. I, was, I got oh, it, I, I got it. it. I'll see if you have the same one. I have this one. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly the one I was going to show. Okay. Although, here, I'll show a different one, because this is like, this is from like a VHS tape. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> here you go. Nice. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny is uh, this was before the Lion King, so would you call him actually Simba one? I don't. I would say Simba one. Yes. You know, so <laughs> technically Simba would be Simba two, and the only Simba two that we get in deck. <laughs> I love this one too. This is like scenes from it, and you see how there's. It looks so much like the Jungle Cruise, at least like the African Belt um, section. You know, mm -hmm. you can see where they got direct inspiration for it. Yeah, and the giraffes and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which I love. So they had that was that was the one um, from. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. That was the one from True Life Adventures that really did do a lot of inspiration for the Jungle Cruise itself. Um, so much so that they were then going to call. The area, um, True Life Adventureland. I so that was I like look, I wrote it. I wrote it right here. I was so excited when I saw that. I was like, "Are you kidding me? They were gonna name it that?" Mm -hmm. This is like the True Life Adventure ride you can see in this original artwork here, um, but they were gonna call it True Life Adventureland, which if that's where Adventureland comes from, they just took off the words True Life and it became Adventureland. Mm-hmm. So it's actually a shortened title for Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. And uh, I did type in real quick. I got some information on African lion. It's, uh, this was all about the habitats of the lions and living in the savanna. And specifically, ooh, it might have showed hunting techniques. I wonder if this actually showed... Yeah, you know, like I think... I always think of the Jungle Cruise probably the most... I Well... Two of the most iconic scenes are going to be the African Velt and the lions with the zebras, and then of course the rhino and maybe the hippos and maybe the waterfall. The Actually, all of it is, is pretty iconic. You know, so. The hippos, I'd say the hippos are one of the biggest ones, but yeah, the elephants too. I think a lot of them. No, not not later, not not ele I don't think the elephant. I mean, the elephant no, bathing the pool little, later. No, like the big elephants that are. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. okay, okay. You're talking about buttered elephants. Get real. Get real. <laughs> You think they're, they're, first of all, who talks about the their mother-in-law, you know? <laughs> I always love that joke about mother-in-laws in there. <laughs> I know. And it's, um, yeah. So I would say the hippos, though, are one of them. We can get to them. We'll get to all the animals. Especially in the beginning, I think the hippos were probably the most iconic. Yeah. You can see where it actually says True Life Adventure Land here. So uh, the other one just said True Life Adventure because they were referencing the ride. But this says True Life Adventure Land in this. And this was actually on the side of this original sketch, which was, went out with the original prospectus for Disneyland. So this is what they were trying to sell to investors to um, get them to invest in Disneyland and uh, make it happen. So this was something that was sketched by um, Herb Ryman um, in a weekend. And he what, was paid in milkshakes. I think we've talked about this before. Walt said, like, which... he's like, I'll do it if you get me a milkshake. <laughs> a malt, malt chocolate malt probably, milkshake. Probably should have asked for more than a, a milkshake. 
well, you know, I, I even could say, you know, I, I don't know if this is if there's any truth to this, but even going a little bit prior is uh, Mickey Mouse Park. Yes. So uh, they, they kind of have a boat ride thing around an island. I don't know exactly the concept, but there's also this little water that ride like over canal, here. A canal ride. So that, that canal ride is and there's notes on it that says that it's like um, the current feeds that one. And I think that one is more like the canal boats of the world, if I had to guess. And then this one with the island seems to be a combination of the rivers of America and also true life adventure like i think he they, they split them into two different concepts okay. after this because they had more space this was a very mm-hmm. small area so you could say it's either really um it's just because it wasn't fully fleshed out yet it was just what it was and if folks don't know what we're talking about this was the precursor to disneyland so uh right across from disney studios yeah mm-hmm. they have one in different colors <laughs> Mine, mine's like a restored version yeah but yeah, so this idea of at least a, a going around an island has been around for a long time. And so I have some notes actually on that in about the design of it um, was the very first concept was a big lake with an island in the middle filled with tropical trees and foliage. So that's kind of what we just saw, right? Um, but what Harper Goff said was what you got is everybody on that boat, if you go counterclockwise around the island, having to look to the left and the boat isn't going to go sideways. So half of the people will have to look over the shoulders of the people beside them. So that wasn't going to work, right? They're like, I can't see, where is it? (laughs) Although that does come, that actually happens a couple of times. Uh, I was looking through the Mark Davis book and they were talking about how in the one gorilla get like hitting down the alligator gag, how uh, this isn't gonna work well on the other side of the boat. (laughs) And Walt's response was like, you'll figure it out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, so they were trying to figure out though what to do. If everybody's looking over the left, um, their second iteration, their second idea of this was have the boats enter the river on the island with sights from both sides. So there would be like a river cutting through the middle of the island and that's where the boat would kind of enter and then go through. So kind of like what we would see now, then you'd have sights on both sides of it. But then, then Harper Goff learned that Walt wanted to have the attraction last a certain amount of time. So he drafted a plan to have the boats cross the lake and then enter the river. And Walt asked how long it would take and, um, and how to get another load and pick them up. And um, um, Harper Goff said, I don't know, because he didn't know how fast the boats would go. So then he suggested, maybe we do a smaller ride. And Walt was like, no, this is a main attraction. We're not doing that. And then he suggested, let's purchase some. No, no, you have to hear this. This is a story. <laughs> um, so then he suggested, why don't we purchase some racing boats to go across so the boats could speed back to the docks? And Walt said, no, he wanted them um, out a certain amount of time and not go too fast. And then um, so they kind of threw that idea out. I have I have a third idea, but did you have you sound, look like you had something to say? So. <laughs> I, I do. I because we're continuing on this path. I would like to. Uh, I'd like to hear the third one. But then yeah. I think we need to go back and we need to talk a little bit for those that don't know. We know it, but I think we need to talk about Harper Goff. Why was he even selected as an Imagineer to even be on this project? What oh, was because sure. he has a connection to True Life Adventures. He also has a you know twenty thousand leagues. I think we need to talk about that. And then I also want to talk about the African Queen. We didn't talk about. Oh, no, we'll get to the African queen. This okay, is cool. All right, I'm just making sure. Because that, that's, that's more like boat design. So I was like, okay. let's, let's just finish this. So, okay, I'm just making okay. sure we're on <laughs> similar here. So um, you can tell that we didn't talk too much before this episode. We never <laughs> talked before these things, <laughs> okay? so that's make it not, up as we go. But it's okay. I'm just making sure we're editing on the fly. <laughs> it's more fun because we were like, what did you find? No, what did you find? Yeah, I mean, but that's like, there's, there, unless I dumped everything on you, you wouldn't necessarily, do you know what I mean? It doesn't work yeah. like that. Yeah, no. Anyway, okay. go ahead. All right. So um, Harper Goff wants like speed boats so they can get everybody to go faster. And Walt's like, what? No, we're not going to do that. Like, I want this to be a slow moving boat ride for a certain amount of time. We're not doing speed boats. <laughs> um, so... The third idea was that um, he kind of just like crumpled up the paper, threw everything out and was like, let's start from scratch. And then the the <laughs> and then the, the final 
iteration is let's do a river ride instead of like this concept with lake and an island let's do a river ride where boats would return to the same place they started and that's how we ended up with what we have now so i won't get into the weeds about construction that will be a whole nother episode of that but that is kind of how we get that general design of a river um, is from that and i want to say that it is 19 we talked about names a little bit um the time when the the name changed to the ride well, why don't you go talk about Harper Goff, and then I'll find all my things about names, because okay. it's a lot. Harper Goff, he was a man. And this man worked for... <laughs> uh, so Harper Goff had, had previously worked on 20,000 Leagues. He did a lot of the concept art. Uh, we know and love him for uh, the Nautilus design. So cool. That steampunk design came from him. And in fact, if you're in Fantasyland over in... Magic Kingdom in uh, Walt Disney World, you will see H. Goff written quite a few places um, because he also did um, some work on uh, some of the concepts for other attractions and some live action stuff. But he did a lot of this sketch and storyboarding for the True Life Adventures. So it wasn't like, so he drew out a lot of the concepts. Remember, this was not just a, a uh, just this is footage. They just had footage. Like, how do you just take raw footage and make it into something more? So the yeah. story lining uh, came from Harper Goff. And then uh, when they were working on the Jungle River Cruise Ride, uh, <laughs> whatever they call it, the the, the Enchanted Tiki, <laughs> Tiki Birds Bird. and Room <laughs> Disney Legends of the Enchanted Tiki Show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I should were... do a shirt with all these names on it because they called it so many things. That, that might be next <laughs> right, one. that might be. <laughs> um, so it's it's again like one of those things where it uh, they go okay. Well, you have all of the, this ideas and history of uh, animals and how they interact really well and how to tell a story with that. So why don't you work on the concept of what the story uh, for this attraction should be? You you just came off of True Life Adventure films. Uh, and also, um, we know that uh, you really, really enjoy uh, telling stories about animals. And Walt wanted originally this to be real live animals. It ends up being too challenging to actually do. Uh, and everyone pretty much said that the animals would run away and be asleep most of the time. So that's why they end up going to audio animatronics. Yeah, you can get this shirt. If anybody's loving on this shirt and if you're not seeing uh, that that amazing name for the original name for the uh, – Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room would be on DisneyCicerone.com. So you can go to Kate's site. She's the one that made it. It's awesome. It's a great shirt. It's fun. So, yeah. So, yeah, Harper Goff. Yeah. So he had traveled to a lot of real jungles, and he actually said he found them uneventful and boring, which I think <laughs> is really funny. Um, so he actually suggested that they... Malaria is not fun or boring. It's okay. Just fun, let no. me... Um, and he actually suggested that they design a Hollywood jungle uh, where exotic inhabitants would appear and perform on cue for each boatload of guests. So he was the one who really pushed for the not not real animals, the more. Um, and I actually do have um, something about that. Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for when we talk about the animals construction, because there's there's good stuff in there. Or I'm going to save that for the episode. So one thing he did love, though, was he had. He had seen um, the African queen. He, this is the quote, okay? You got to listen to this. Hang on, I have, a nautil got... I have a Nautilus on my, oh, my Disney cup. cup. Yeah. That's fun. And the worst picture of the castle ever. It's got that a giant a tree picture. in the way. I, who'd pick that? Why? Anyway, oh, go ahead. Gosh. Um, so this is an actual quote from Harper Goff. It says, I'd seen the African queen and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why they chose. So... Um, if you haven't seen The African Queen, uh, run and go watch it because it is amazing. It's it's amazing. really good. It's, it's so a, good. It's a really good film. It pretty you much can... reminds me right of the Jungle Jungle Cruise. And yeah. I feel like they lifted the, the current Jungle Cruise movie, a lot of it from this movie, quite honestly. Yes. Agreed. And, uh, and this film was, uh, if you think about time periods, right? 1948 was our first true life adventure film series. Uh, the African Queen comes out in 1951. Yeah. And so they had um, the idea of the alligators are in there. They go over a giant, like, rapid slash waterfall. So the idea of going over the falls is from that. They have um, – the, if, you if you don't know what the movie is about, 
it's essentially this um, woman who lives with her brother in the middle of nowhere and he's a doctor which we'll get into later that also has also has connections to the jungle cruise um but and he passes away and she's by herself and then the germans come in because it's around that time um and this uh, guy mr allnut rescues her so to speak um gets her on his boat because he would deliver supplies to them every week and then they and then she's like well let's we got to go do something about you know people occupying things and she was all she's all gung-ho for like let's go do our effort for the war (laughs) he's kind of thinking she's crazy and he's not he doesn't have very good hygiene but they might fall in love. It's a really fun, adventurous story. It involves jungle things, and it mm-hmm. reminds you so much of the Jungle Cruise, and in fact, where they got the boat. Yeah. So uh, let me give you a, a brief synopsis here. Uh, so this was this was written in fifty one. So think about it, like time period wise. We're just coming out of World War II, uh, and this was directed by John uh, Huston. And starred Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn, two powerhouses of Which the time. I'm named and, after. Yeah, you're named after Catherine named Hepburn. Named after Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. Thanks, mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Uh, the film is set in German East Africa during World War One, and it follows the story of the prim and proper, proper English missionary Rose. Sayer, played by Catherine Hepburn. Honestly, prim and proper. I, I mean, this is basically you. And uh, rough around the edges, riverboat captain Charlie Allnut, uh, played by Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> kind of reminds me of me. As they journey down the Yolanga River in a small steamer, the African Queen. The film is a classic adventure story that blends elements of romance, comedy, and drama and is notable for its stunning location, photography, and outstanding performances, and it was critically and commercially a huge, huge success. And I know, I know, a couple of people are like, "Oh, the African Queen." Yes, it is a boat, and it was saved from being destroyed. And yes, you can find it here in Florida; it still yeah. exists. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. I love so you can, like, you can obviously, it. yeah, you can obviously see the uh, the inspiration for the Jungle Cruise boats because it's pretty much lifted exactly from this. Mm-hmm. Here, wait. You have that. Let me pull up an actual picture of the Jungle Cruise boat. Not a, not my best picture, but something. You can pretty yeah. much see the inspiration. Do you love how like the it. even even the uh, the colors of the awning? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like like come on. It's like the, all they did was they put a canopy on top <laughs> across the whole thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's well the canopy plays a very specific role. Do we? Um, I don't think. Well, we should get into boat discru- dis- construction and no, probably because no, 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 we no. can't we can't go there yet. But yeah, the African Queen. So another little fun tidbit is that the uh, African Queen actually does show up in Disneyland. So if you're in Disneyland, go head on over to Bengal Barbecue and go and look in the kind of the back wall of the seating area, and you can find this picture from lifted from the African Queen. But it's gotten little Disney elements thrown in there. You've got Albert the monkey. And then there's a picture of Dr. Albert Falls on the table. And then they added the um, Zambidi, um, Zambizi Miss. Albert the monkey is the one from uh, Mystic Phantom Manor. Mystic Manor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He opens up that Pandora's box or whatever that thing is. Music so this box. is a little like, yeah, like, yes. And then it's a nod to you see know, the Society of Explorers and Adventures. Uh... I got to look in the, not the vestibule. Yeah, maybe it's in the vestibule area. I feel like there is a African queen poster in Skipper Canteen. I okay. am fairly like 82 and a half percent sure. Okay. Now I <laughs> which is pretty, <laughs> which is pretty sure for me. That's pretty great. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so the African Queen was a, a massive influence. If you love the Jungle Cruise at all, go watch the African Queen if you haven't seen it because you'll and love it. If you haven't seen it uh, and you want to, uh, you know, by all means, get it any way you can. But it is on YouTube. And hang on, I have a little quick clip I wanted to show just of them going down the the river. Hang on, I had it already queued up. I had it queued up, but it was it's Darn been so long. Yeah, well, it's it was <laughs> it was queued up, and then uh, and then oh, come on, <laughs> of course it's too, of I, course. I, I I had it sitting for too long. That's the problem. <laughs> I wasn't watching enough of whoever put this up. 
<laughs> podcast sponsored by Verbo. <laughs> I wish we were sponsored by both Verbo and TurboTax, but we are they not. They want to sponsor me. I'll take they, it. <laughs> well, hey, Verbo would be nice, but there you go. Oh my gosh, I love this movie. I know. It's a great film. It's really funny, too. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> their, their little romance, their like back this... and forth is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, I just love, uh, the, I mean, look at those rapids. That's some scary stuff. <laughs> this <laughs> acting is impeccable. Who was the person who had to throw the water on Catherine oh, Hepburn know, in that? right? That is, that, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Just watch Catherine Hepburn get doused. Like, it's real quick. <laughs> Somebody just throws water on her randomly <laughs> as they go over this little tiny falls. I love that he lets her steer, like, for the most part. He, like, mm -hmm. lets her try to navigate because she's never done it before. And then he's like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, why not? What's best. the problem? <laughs> it's not something they would let women do back then. So it's pretty amazing. It's a fun, such a fun movie. <laughs> it's like a bucket of water just randomly. <laughs> Spare no expense. <sighs> <laughs> so, so, okay. So then we have the names of the Jungle Cruise. I kind of hinted at this earlier. And they're like a lot of these rides when they're in process. You know, the prospectus for Disneyland really had a lot of things that just kind of never came to pass. They had Lilliputian land, um, which was like a, a land of miniatures. They had all kinds of things that maybe just didn't quite pan out or their names changed or the concepts changed. So um, the name changed to a couple of things. Um Tropical Rivers of the World. It was called that for a while. Tropical River Ride, Jungle Rivers of the World, and then Jungle Cruise when the name was thought to be too long in 1959. So think of when the Matterhorn came in the park and they did all of that. That's when the Jungle Cruise actually changed to Jungle Cruise. Um, and on the souvenir books, like we love how merch always kind of gets the name wrong, right? We know merch always gets it wrong. So the souvenir book said, they call it the Explorer Boat Ride, the River Boat Ride, the Jungle River Boat Ride, and the Jungle River Boat Safari. <laughs> and I feel all like this of which, one we... All of which are wrong. This is, so this is an actual paper fan from um, 1955. Isn't that, your, isn't that your mom's? It was my mom's, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's double-sided, and I keep it in here so I don't break it. But it says Tropical River Ride, which, of course, this is merch, right? So Tropical River Ride. You can see Schweitzer Falls there. I love that. Yeah. So. That's I such a wonderful, it. like, keepsake, too. I know. It's so special for me. Um, and it's it's fragile, so I'm glad they made it from 1955. But So there was, there was all these different names. I And I feel like we, we kind of skipped over it, though, what the original perspective actually says about this ride. Do you mind if we go into that just a little bit? Maybe I would hate that. No, I'm just kidding. I and uh, and honestly, I'm already looking at time. Uh, I have all this Harper Goff like concept art. I almost feel like I don't. I don't. Next time. I, yeah, I don't want to rush it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we um, talk about this? Um, let's do the original perspective prospectus and maybe just pause there, unless you have something you really want to add today. No, no. I I'm I'm down with that because honestly, uh, it's I'd rather make them really good succinct audio experiences too so it makes more sense rather than us like trying to force and it you can't force what's next put it that way yeah that's true so there i've actually sent these to to kirk because i was like he has to see these original documents <laughs> this is what we do is we <laughs> just send each other random documents from at 2 30 in the morning and i'll be like oh yo, <laughs> yo did you see this it was late i'm sorry i hope you had your notifications off i was um, asleep dude i didn't see it until this morning <laughs> So there's there's kind of like the draft of it that was, um, and these were both kind of compiled by Nat Weinkoff, um, who we've talked about as one of the original Disney villains, so to speak, of the parks, um, along with C.B. Wood, which is a whole other thing, the gangster, so to speak, C.B. Wood of Disneyland. But um, Nat Weinkoff made this one, and so he talks about... Um, so this is, I'll read you the draft one first, and then we'll go to the um, kind of the more polished version they sent out to everybody. So 
At the end of Main Street, we come to the hub or the crossroads of Disneyland. The first thing to the right of the hub is a botanical garden, a crystal palace idea, um, which there'll be tropical flowers, tropical fish, and tropical birds on ex exhibition. Although this is an exhibit, you'll be able to purchase anything you see, and we will mail, sa mail same to any part of the country for you. You can buy some animals. Um, however, we will use the botanical garden as an entrance to the tr a true life adventure ride. Here you will find yourself on a pier with an explorer's boat. This will take you for a trip on the tropical waters of the world. For example, when you start out in the boat, you may go to, oh gosh, I was going to look up how to pronounce this. Zochimilco, Zochimilco, it starts with the next, Mexico. I'm sorry, I've probably butchered that. Um, then Central America, South America, and as you cross the imaginary line of the equator, an animated Neptune will come up out of the water. At the end of their trip, you'll get a card stating you have crossed the equator in Disneyland and have been initiated into the domain of Neptune's Rex. Hang on. I got you covered. Thank you. Hang on. Ready? <laughs> All right, everybody, everybody, listen intently. Here's the pronunciation. Xochimilco. Good luck with that. I never would have gotten that. Xochimilco. It's more wow. like Sochi. Um... So then further on, as you make a bend in the waters, an animated alligator will come up and open its jaws as the boat goes by. You may see two or three hippos doing the same thing. And as you get near darkest Africa, a headhunter will stick his head out from behind a clump of trees and perhaps show you a shrunken head. Synced up with the boat will be a tape machine that will tell you just what part of the world you're going through. And there on the embankments in miniature, you will see the little villages and points of interest on the trip, as well as the tropical settings and birds. So obviously a lot change <laughs> from that, even from that to the next prospectus. Um, I love that they have miniature in there too. So they're kind of playing around with like Lilliputian land. Like, what are we doing here? Um, you do see a little bit of uh, Trader Sam kind of peeking in, in mm -hmm. there and the hippo pool um, and the alligators. They, they were big, um, but Neptune, I love that you'd see Neptune coming up out of the water. It's like, it's like, it's like Little Mermaid. <laughs> it is. It's funny because, like, if you think about it, this attraction really ends up being very serious and very yes. uh, much like the the um, the True Life Adventure films. It, it just, it's it's very almost scientific. Is like a weird way to put it. So yeah. to hear in the perspective that they would just have like Neptune, like, <laughs> and you get a card that you like entered his realm from the right. equator. You cross the equator. <laughs> oh, okay. What a Neptune card. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> he sings ah, just like Ariel. I love that. <laughs> he comes out of the water singing. Thanks, Sally. That was great. actually he would come out of the water and he would break all your human stuff because he hates human stuff. Yeah, pretty just, much. Uh, he we would not be handing out cards, that's for sure. That's he not would not. <laughs> he would not be a fan of us. So um, this, obviously, this was kind of a very, like, rough sketch of Disneyland. They were just throwing everything against the wall, seeing what stuck at this point. And that, this is also the one, by the way, where you get ping pong balls being shot at you in Peter Pan, <laughs> which I just really kind of wish we still had. <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> I think it would make it fun. So anyway, so then it gets revised and polished and then it's now it's true life adventure land in this uh, later copy um true life adventure land is entered through a beautiful botanic botanical garden of tropical flora and fauna here you can see magnificently plumed birds and fantastic fish from all over the world and which may be purchased and shipped anywhere in the u.s if you so desire which i think we can't really like skip over that because they're saying you can buy fish and birds and have them shipped anywhere in the world Hey, uh, I'll take two of those and one of that. And yeah, just throw the couple squawkers in there and send it to uh, Idaho. All right, cool. See you later. <laughs> this is awesome. These three tropical fish. Yeah, yeah I'll mail them to my house. I'll see them when I get home. It's like, weird. what? It's very weird. Yeah, it does um, sound illegal. I agree. I know. I feel like uh, I, at first I thought they were talking about like feathers because I know feathers on women's hats and things were a mm -hmm. thing. But then I was like, no, these are like live animals. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. So then it says, if you wish refreshments that are in keeping with your surroundings, there are fresh pineapple sticks, crisp coconut meats, and exotic fruit punches made from fresh tropical fruits, which we did kind of get with the, we've talked about the tiki juice bar. I'm, I'm annoyed that we don't get pineapple skewers, except for occasionally during food and wine with tahine. Like we don't have that. Yeah, like even, kind of even our, our fruit stands are pretty lame. Like they're just like, here's an apple, a $2 apple. JT said it was good though, but it looked like a red delicious and I don't really trust that. So. No, red delicious. No. Mm. I know that is like no. a that's a mealy apple. Like that's we've like a come crime so far. From the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> like we don't do that here. <laughs> oh gosh. The only reason why it's called red delicious is because nobody would eat it otherwise if it wasn't named that. Yeah, that's true. They had to. It's like, oh, this is gross. Like, let's call it delicious. Right, because no one would ever think it if we didn't <laughs> say it in the name. People will buy it if we say. Right. Yeah. But then, okay, then where was the marketing team on Granny Smith? I think they really missed the mark on that. <laughs> yeah, this really reminds me of my grandmother. Smith, you're insane. Well, she's a tart old lady, you know? She's sour, okay. A little sour. She's, yeah, she's like sour real biting and tart and, you know, I just, oh, perfect. Smith. All right, Granny Smith, write it up there. I mean, that reads for some. some that people. reads. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> anyway, we're this, into none of this is true. None show. of this is true, by no, the way. That we was respect the... our, our right. and we appreciate them. So, just anyway, <laughs> um, moving on from apples. So, <laughs> the last part of this is um, a river borders the edge of True Life Adventureland, where you embark on a colorful explorer's boat with a native guide for a cruise down the river river of romance. That's what they call the river, river of romance. As you glide through the Everglades, past birds and animals living in their natural habitat, alligators lurk along the banks and otters and turtles play in the water around about you. Monkeys chatter in the orchid flowered trees. So it was- Lark, the, it, lark, lark. Yeah. Well, a lot of it was placed in like, the Suwannee, Suwannee, Suwannee River. And so it was all placed like an Everglades setting was kind of like where they first had it, which is ironic that they ended up building Which is weird, right? Because, <laughs> well, think about that, right? Like, yeah, it's like the Everglades are so, uh, you know, that's like so foreign and tropical, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. So that is um, what they thought it would be. And then eventually it did... Um, Oh, that's the other thing that I didn't point out, and this is just a small thing, but if you notice on this map, True Life Adventure Land is located kind of underneath where Tomorrowland is, or Tomorrowland was going to be, like the world of tomorrow. So it was on the opposite side of the park yeah, very than different. what it is now. So then it moved, um, like if you see this one with Waltz, he's so helpfully pointing to its location, which is on the opposite side of the park. Thank you, Walt, for the assist. So it did shift over when they just kind of reorganized some of the, the lands there. Um, and then they renamed it to all those Jungle River crazy names that we talked about already. Um, can I, I this... can I ask you uh, just an opinion? Yeah. Do you think, much like Pirates, right? Pirates gets built in Disneyland. Pirates comes over here. They make the assumption no one wants to see pirates here because pirates are all over the place in Florida. The Caribbean's right there. It's not that interesting, right? Do you think if they would have made it an Everglades ride, would it have become so iconic of a location, a feel? Like, let's say you're on a fan boat, you know? Let's say it was that. <laughs> and, it, and it comes to, to Walt Disney World. Do you think people would go, well, we want the Everglades version? Like if they tried to bring a different version. Mm, that's a good question. Or would they, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause they probably wouldn't have even made it if it was Everglades, like with their thought process of being, this doesn't need to exist unless Walt had pushed it. Walt probably would have been like, cause he's such a fan of animals and really loves the educational aspect and trying to, you know, but I, I don't, I wonder I don't... if they, yeah, I kind of wonder if they would have tried to retheme it like the Western River Expedition where oh, they, would, stop, they would, stop talking about it. It's so sad. I'm sorry. It's I know. the saddest thing it's ever. Painful. It's I the one the attraction. It. <laughs> it would have been so good. Okay. Anyway. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think I kind of wonder if they would have rethemed it at that point if it was originally this Everglades concept and then maybe rethemed it to some other river in the world, you know, but the Nile or something. And they did add several, several things to the Florida attraction, which we'll get into later when we go through all of the scenes. Yeah. But... And and I'm going to tell you, I think we need to just focus on Disneyland and get through Disneyland and then use Walt Disney World, much like we do. Like we can do draw some comparisons as we're talking about Disneyland, but I, I think we should almost look at Walt Disney World as like a like a plusing or a like a different, completely different experience, much like we did like Haunted Mansion and Holiday because they're just so uniquely different. Like, yeah, yeah, it's. I a... mean, there there are crossover scenes, but I almost feel like we should go scene by scene in Disneyland first, not to confuse people and like just interject world in there the whole time. I think yeah, we do no, Disneyland, it was the OG, and then go, you know, another 20 years into... Yeah, because Disneyland cruise. really was the OG. It was the original, so... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. I think that would be a good way. But, yeah, to answer your question, I think I feel like they probably would have tried to retheme it, but they tried to do that with Pirates, too. It, it just all depends on if they had showed it on TV like they did everything else and got people excited about it, they're going to want to see the same thing. Because you think of... So many people on the East Coast never got to Disneyland because it was just way too far away. So they wanted to see pirates for the first time. And they were so upset that they're like, what do you mean there's no pirates here? I've been watching this on TV. So That's I almost so think true. like they would want to see the thing that they saw on TV exactly as it was. But I think Disney would probably want to try to retheme it to something else to do something new, to make it more exciting, to plus it, you know, just like they were going to do with Western River Expedition. I have everybody over here saying, imagine like uh, trying to have a, the skippers doing their spiel with the fan boat, with an airboat running. <laughs> <laughs> this point at doing the two finger point because it's so loud. <laughs> You'd have to give people little separate like earphones like they do on tours at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would. It's true. I didn't think of that. But it's no. they would they would not do it like that. But yeah, no. Well, I feel like that's a that's a good place to pause. We have so much concept art, and then getting into um, we we're going to talk about all the sounds and the music of the Jungle Cruise. We're going to talk about the construction, the landscaping, and then we're going to move scene by scene. We've got the cues of the Jungle Cruise, which is like a whole thing in itself. Um, and uh, there's just there's a lot, which is great. I'm excited. I. <laughs> This is one of our favorites, and again, because it's so rich with detail and history and concept and stories and almost like mythology and legacy behind it too. That it's just it's, and it's a very very. Some would say I'm not saying this is empirical, but some would even suggest this this is maybe Walt Disney's favorite attraction. Yeah, yeah, he's he was a big fan. <laughs> it is think of him driving her in that Nash Rambler like driving through the Jungle Cruise. <laughs> it was like uh like ellie with her ecv going upstream <laughs> that, that was horn so great <laughs> amazing yeah um so uh yeah so next week we'll just keep on rolling we're going to talk about uh, we'll show you the, some of the concept art um we'll probably get into a little bit of the construction that i'm guessing next week at least I think I think we could probably talk about site, location, things that were there, but probably not get too much further. Because we'll there's there's a lot of concept art too. Yes, there is. Um, so this this is how these series go. For any of you who are not familiar with this story, is we just we want to find the itty bitty tiny nitty gritty details of all the things, and so we take our time and do it and just go very slowly when we analyze these attractions. Yeah, if, cause if you if you went right now online and typed in Jungle Cruise history, just do it, please do. You will be you'll maybe get if you're lucky four paragraphs, maybe, yeah. and that is that's everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, that does not do it justice to this attraction no. that is amazing. So, yeah, we take our time and we tell the stories that nobody's willing to because we love, 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 love the details. And I will point out <clears throat> a few of the books that I'm using as I'm researching this um, because I do love. And a lot of these are um, they cite their primary sources very well. And then I go and kind of verify their sources. But one is my one I've talked about before is the Disneyland story by Sam Genoway really great one just for the like chronological history of the park so it's highly detailed 
I'm, I've also been really enjoying Disney's Land recently with Richard Snow. I've been, I'm almost all the way through this one. I haven't finished it yet, but I've enjoyed um, everything that I've read and it does have a lot about the Jungle Cruise in there. Um, I've also and got Walt Disney. This one has a little pieces here and there of the Jungle Cruise. Don't you have these in some sort of linked thing where people can purchase these things and find them on yes. Amazon? Isn't that somewhere? Yes, it's on my link in bio. I have an Amazon storefront with a book list. So um, you can you can find all of the books that I recommend, history books there. And then, of course, we have the grand book that we're going to use later, which you you have. Do you have it handy? I do. I, I, I do have it handy. I can go get it in like less than 40 seconds. Oh, I have I have it. I just oh, I don't I don't have it. it. <laughs> I no, I, I didn't because we're not even close to the pictures in there are all when they plussed it. So well, it's... I'm just pointing these out. So if anybody wants to get these books and follow along, um, yeah, as is... we, especially as we head towards um, the later, like the scenes, we'll talk a lot about Mark Davis's concept art. Mm -hmm. So this is actually from a two part series. This is volume one of Imagineering uh, Mark Davis in his own words, Imagineering the Disney theme parks. And it's a brilliantly done collection. Yeah. Massively. Effort. I can't even, I can't hold it. It's really heavy. <laughs> It's. I sat on my couch with it on my lap. It was easier. Yeah, it's got virtually like every sketch he's ever made about anything he's ever touched in it. So, if you like Mark Davis, it's not a cheap book. It's not a small book. It's not a light book. But I definitely recommend that read. So you'd say it's not light reading. It's not light reading. <laughs> no, honestly, it's uh, it's probably if you're a freak and a visual learner. You know and love Mark Davis for his humor in the attractions. So, and this is not just Jungle Cruise. It's all the attractions that he did and didn't do. And in fact, if you want to see any of, uh, it was really funny. I, I don't know where or how one of your TikToks came up. Or maybe it was a, a YouTube short. And it was like, the unused gags of Disneyland's Jungle Cruise. And I was like, Kate, you, I knew that was you. I just I saw the I saw the frame and I was like, that's Kate. You showed up on Google. <laughs> I did. Mm -hmm. What? That's crazy. That's true. Yeah, you. SEO is a wild thing, isn't it? It it's is. Crazy. Nobody's making your stuff, so yeah. I know it's fun. It's so much fun, and I have so much fun. A lot of it's stuff I, like I already know. Some of it I've like I have this massive la list of like things I can make content from, but I. Just like sometimes I'm like something jumps out at me and I was like, oh, I need to research that. And then I go and make something. It's just like creative process. So that's why today um, I found in that prospect prospectus something that said that um, going uh, the, the thing that they recommend people do first when they come into Disneyland is ride the train first. Um, and oh, that's that a was great like video. Recommended for vi and I was like, what? I was like, there's a way that they recommended guests visit Disneyland and I always thought it would be walking down Main Street USA considering how they designed it but it's not which makes sense from Waltz and his love for trains honestly but it was just like oh my goodness this was such an amazing find so pouring over these originally original primary source documents is I'm a, I'm a huge nerd but I don't care because I love it so. yeah <laughs> and I get to share with all of you great. yeah it was a good so. story it was a good story I like that one that was that was a good one that was fun yeah Oh, thank you. Um, so that is, I think, it for this episode of Distory. Unless you have anything else to add, Kirk? I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for coming along with us on this um, adventure down the rivers of romance. <laughs> it sounds funny. The, the jungle cruise, the jungle explore, exploration, but whatever you want to call it. Thank you for coming with us on this journey because it's going to be a fun one. And we have to, have to have Kirk talk, tell us all of the original skip, Skipper jokes, which I have from 1973. Oh. I've got a script. You're going to you're gonna oh. get a workout because everybody wants to hear you do that. <laughs> I, you, I'll do, you, yes, yes. We'll get, we'll get visuals. I'll get the scripts. I'll get a hat. We'll be fine. Yeah, eventually I'm going to get a Disney bound for this and it will be great. When I come in March, we'll have to do something jungle cruisy it'll be great i think yeah that would be great we got to go to skipper canteen again i need to have the dan dan noodles i really do yeah yeah let's do that let's, let's make it happen we can stare at the books for a couple hours like we do for the <laughs> and books then, and it's going to be its own episode 
the oh books my God. in Skipper Canteen. How would it, how would it not? I mean, after I talking with Kevin, it was like, oh this is gosh. insane. We are like the amazing. luckiest people. <laughs> we're like, meanwhile, we're stuffing our face with Nutella talking about the books and then in pops. Oh, oh you know, I designed all those. So that's my <laughs> chiropractor's uh, name. Oh, okay. That was amazing. I know. Having Very lucky. Kevin Lively, Very getting lucky. to chat with him and, and hear exactly why and how and who these people were on these books. And I cannot wait for that episode. That's going to be so much fun to talk about that. So mm, really I love appreciate that. him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. I'm out of here. Out all right. Of see you. Enjoy the beach. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We really Thank appreciate you. you guys. And uh, again, if you, I will say I, before I go, um, we do have the shirts available, like we mentioned, at DisneySisterOwned.com. But Kirk also has quite amazing um, merch as well available at WalrusCarp.com. So give him a little support there and a like. But I'll see y'all. We'll see you guys. <laughs> We'll uh, see you guys next week for our continuation of the Jungle Cruise history. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>